In today's wave of all these topics that go against the truth, the Bible, how do we as Christians remain in a quiet, civil discord? That's today. Let's get it started in here. Welcome to The View from a Pew, a conversation among Christians who are out to grow their faith by asking the simple questions, the tough questions, and the stuff you really wish your pastor would talk about. Come on now, let's reason together. It's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so join the conversation. Call 855-244-0077. That's 855-244-0077. Now, here's your host. J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon, third day of May of the Lord's Year 2013. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is The View from a Pew, the Friday edition. And yes, we have 15% more fun on Friday. And to prove that, Maddie Smith is in the house for the first time in this it's, year, maybe? No, last, what it last, no, two weeks ago. Last two, time last time he did his show on a Friday. Okay, so <laughs> that's right, that's right, you were here. That's I was right. here, I was here. All right, you okay, you've, been, you, you've been playing soccer out in this weather? Uh, it's all off today. Indoors today. We're training indoors. Slay it on. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, for those of you who know, Maddie is a uh, soccer coach. Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat in the house, and my guest today is Tamara Scott. And the reason I called Tamara is that I wanted to have this conversation on civil discord. Because, um, and, and, and really, I, I've called these people in for my own therapeutic reasons. Because I'm a Facebooker, all right? And I like to put provocative posts up. And make people think. Yeah, you do. And uh, lately, I have found that civil discord has gone out the window, including myself. I'm going to put myself at the top of this pyramid for every conversation we talk about. I think, well, maybe there won't. Yeah, probably for every conversation we talk about. I understand that I am off the charts. I had a buddy of mine call me today and literally asked me if I was okay. And he wasn't kidding. He said, are, are you Everything okay with you and the bride? Are you is work okay? Because you're just like off the charts here. And I said, Yeah, I know I am. And I, and I, I I'm being fed and pushed just like I feed and push people. But we've got to talk about as Christians. And and this is just an area that I'm not very good at. I'm young enough in this walk that I'm just not sure how or when do you pull back. When when, when do you decide that as a Christian I'm just I'm just out of bounds. And, and even though it may be the truth that I speak from my mouth, I shouldn't be speaking this. Even though it's the truth, it just doesn't have a place in, in, in this arena. So, uh, uh, Tamara, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. And uh, I'm glad I'm here on Friday when you have, what, 15%? 15% more fun. That's great. Yeah. Now, I guess, and I did not know this, but this is great. You were on with Jan Michelson, or, or not Simon Jan Michelson. Simon Conway. Simon earlier this week, and you guys had the same conversation? Not quite. Um, we had we felt like we were victims of of you know there's, oh. there are there there's discourse um, there there is civil disobedience there there are all those different levels but if we both believe in what we say your side my side it could be differing but can we not still be respectful mm -hmm. even though we disagree you don't have to be disagreeable you don't have to be disrespectful right so it was interesting so what what what, what is disrespectful. Is there a, is there a, I mean, if I had a lefty in here, would, would we never be able to come to an agreement on what disrespect is, or can we do that just no matter what side or, or, or place we take? If we're reasonable, rational, and we believe in something that we think we can defend, then I don't think you have to have the personal attack. I don't think you have to have the heightened voice. Um, sure, we're passionate. The Bible talks about a righteous anger. There comes a time when Christians ought to have a righteous anger. But that's not a vindictive, uh, malevolent. That is, that is I, I'm standing firm because I want what is best for you. I want what is best for our society. Not because I hate you, I'm angry at you, or I'm just going to beat you in the public realm. Well, and I... And I, I 
whenever I get into a debate with somebody on Facebook, I, I realize that I'm really at a disadvantage because I'm a verbal communicator. I don't communicate, you know, one line, one text, 144 characters at a time. And it's so easy for someone to um, attack with those words because you're not looking at them. They're not eyeball to eyeball. Um, um, it, it just seems so much. It's so impersonal. It is. And, and the problem, and I find this when I speak to a group, when you bring up a subject, I don't care what it is, the audience right away brings in their personal experience to whatever you're talking about. If you're talking about fathers, you could be talking about your father in heaven. They're going to talk about the father they don't know or the father that was missing or the everyone takes it to their level. When you're reading somebody else's text or they're reading your email, they put the tone they think mm -hmm. you're saying it with mm -hmm. and you might not have meant that at all. Yeah, th there's sometimes that I actually type the words to describe the tone, you know, or or I I, I'll say, now, I'm whispering this in your ear very gently. Yeah. And then, of course, after that, you shouldn't do everything in capital letters because <laughs> that kind of gets rid of the idea of that. But now, Maddie, you're not on Facebook. Uh, not really. I, I'm sort of get on and off here, but I'll, I should get on it. What, well, we're not a, friends if you are. <laughs> are you getting some good... What have you, you been tweeting about or f tweeting oh, about? I've been, or I've talking been, about... <laughs> I, I've been, and I can't figure out uh, whether it's the good Lord or whether it's the accuser who's got a hold of me on this gay marriage issue. Because I just seem to be, uh, all these articles and all these uh, stories just seem to funnel right into me. The whole Jason Collins thing. You know what I'm talking yeah, about, right? Based, by a basketball player. Yeah. Yeah. That whole thing just drives me nuts. Here you've got Tim Tebow who's a decent enough player to play in the NFL. And all he does is drop to his knee and bow his head and thank the good Lord when something wonderful has happened on the football team. He's not jumping around. He's not high-fiving, not hip dancing or belly flopping or whatever they do out there. And he's criticized right. constantly. And then a, 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 a less than adequate basketball player who's in the NBA, he's, in fact, he doesn't even have a team right now, decides to come out that he's gay, that he deceived his fiance of eight years. And, and I think he was on every newspaper, every single network earlier this week. Exalted. Exalted, that's a good word. And, and the president calls him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think members of the military, I'm not sure their families have gotten phone calls from the president when yeah. something's happened to them. How, how? okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> are you see, but I why just, are you surprised? I just though? screwed the top back on my bottle. So my, I'm, but here's I'm, my question for you: Why are you surprised? Has it ever is, has it ever been any different? Oh yeah, no, yeah. it hasn't. No, Maddie, there was a day in this country. Bob, you're old enough to remember it. You know, there was. But a not day for Christianity, though. Christianity's always been Christianity's been under persecution, and if not, you you want to ask why not? So if there was a time in this country when Christians weren't being persecuted, you want to say why? Well, why was that then? Okay, that's a good point. When were we not being persecuted? And why weren't you being persecuted is the next question. <laughs> I've got a shot at that, but I'll let you know. Yeah, no, it, it, it depends on uh, where you live, for, where in the country you were, um, and the people you were, were with. The media is, you know, they're the ones that rule uh, what we hear. What the, They're going to give us what they want it and how they see things. And so the there's a huge, huge... Uh, impact that the media has on us and so right. uh and there are many things that they do not cover and they will not even talk about like, like the, the abortion Gosnell trial yes exactly oh, yeah, the abortion example. doctor mm -hmm. that's murdered these kids and uh, they don't even touch it and so th that media coming up has been a huge influence on and and really try to make people think a certain way and so they keep pushing their agenda and pushing their agenda and you know, you tell a lie long enough, people believe it's the truth. And the way they frame it. Mm -hmm. They never talk about you on the on the marriage side being pro-marriage, pro-family. They talk about you as being anti, and they call it same-sex, and I refuse to call it same-sex marriage. It's homosexual marriage, and it's not marriage. Marriage is only between a man and a woman. Right. But they keep framing the argument, so right away you start at a, dis at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, you're called a bigot. Yes, intolerant, hateful. Hateful, that's hate speech. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which, and I don't know if Frankie's listening, but I hope if he is listening, I he hope is. he calls. He's on, is he's Frankie, on chat. Yeah, I hope he calls because Fr Frankie just loves, you know, I'll just say, uh, well, you know, God, and he'll interrupt me there and say, hate speech. 
Hate speech. But God, God's hate speech. And how can the God who sacrificed his own son so that we might too have salvation and come to heaven with him, he, he gave his own son so that we could join him in heaven for eternity. How is that hateful? Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah. All right, let's go to the phones. This is not the Frank I was talking about. Okay. This is a different Frank. <laughs> Frank, I won't, how I you won't doing? let him have it. <laughs> uh, good. How are you? Good, good. Well, here's the problem. First off, as Christians uh, on Facebook, I find the first words out of their mouth is we're ridiculed because persecution is one of the tenets of our faith. We're not really a Christian, and we're not really doing our job unless we're persecuted. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in their mind that, that we're being persecuted. Now, Tamara, do you agree with that, with the statement that, that we're not really being Christians unless we're being persecuted? And not necessarily. Um, there are some folks who, who, who almost look for the fight because they think somehow that is the blessing of the persecution is a blessing. And it's true that the Bible says, blessed are those who be persecuted for my namesake. But a lot of it we can control by our own manner. If when you're taking saying you don't know who has you on the marriage issue, if if it if it's God or if it's the, the accuser, other. yeah. Well, here's the deal: we know what the Bible says on marriage. God has never changed on marriage, and so, but we can we can get taken up in our own flesh. We can be right on the principle, but act out in the flesh, and our own argument, our own words can harm the movement, can harm us, because we're not acting in the spirit of love and the Holy Spirit. Go ahead, Frank. And then the second thing is, uh, uh, another thing is, is I've been reading some stories about some ministers in Canada and whatnot that preaching against homosexual marriage are now being accused and, and trying to be persecuted for hate speech. Mm -hmm. Scott so, so when you when you are out there spreading the gospel that you've been instructed to spread by Christ, right. And he says that, that you are allowed as a follower of his when you go in and somebody rejects what you're telling them to dust your feet. I use these avenues such as Bradshaw, Fallon, and different ones to get on. Uh, to, to, I'm not necessarily always talking to Fallon or Bradshaw. I'm talking to the people that's listening. And and but but we're given the we're given the permission slip by Christ when people don't accept the, you know when we drop our, per, our we're told number one not to drop our pearls amongst the swine. Right. And that can be the, the precious truths and the precious, precious words of God are not to be mocked and ridiculed. But we're supposed to witness to the unbeliever and to the unsaved, and, and, and then we turn around and we're accused of hate speech. So we're allowed, number one, to dust our feet at their door. You know, and, 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 and I'm just getting to the point where you can't say anything on Facebook without being accused that you're speaking hate. Yeah, I've, I, and thanks for the call, Frank. I, 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 I'm the same way. I mean, <laughs> it, it's just, it's like it's automatic. It, it's like it's automatic computerized that I put something up there and some fool will get up there and say, well, that's just hate speech and you're a bigot and you're a hater and you're intolerant. And, and I'm beginning to realize that's a... Um, what do you call them in politics? Uh, the speaking? No, the those are the talking points. It's it is it is a talking and it's a crutch. It's what they fall back on when they have no logic to support another argument. It is there's a book called After the Ball that talks about the homosexual agenda and their plans and they were very well calculated, but they have a plan. It's called jamming and isolating. And so anytime you make a statement in support of marriage. They come out and just jam your email box, jam your in, you know, all kinds of bad publicity, and then they work to isolate you so that no one wants to come near you. And what happens is, if you hold, if you have a job at a at a large insurance company, chances are you'll be looked over for a promotion, if not fired, or forced to go through sensitivity training. Mm -hmm. If you're a student in the public schools, you can be given detention. You, you, you it can be put on your record and. So this is how, it's not just peer pressure, it's this is how they have infiltrated, because we have retreated, frankly, and we need to retake these areas, but this is how our young generation, the 18 to 24 year olds that think we're wrong on marriage, don't understand what God said about it, we're losing the battle, not because we're wrong or because marriage is wrong, it's not an indictment on marriage, it's an indictment on us as Christians. All right, Tamara Scott is my guest today. Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat. 15% more fun on Friday because Maddie's here <laughs> and Ryan's producing. I'm Jay Michael McCoy. We're talking about civil <coughs> discord. I've got a video to play for you coming up in just a minute. Uh, it may be a video you've seen before, but it's a, 
I think you're going to find it interesting, and it's right up this alley. Hopefully, little Frankie will call, and we'll have this conversation live today on The View from a Pew. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going, though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed rider, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. You've got questions, you've got the answer. Join the conversation. It's your voice we want to hear. So call 855 244 0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, 21 minutes after the hour, we are uh, live in the studio with uh, Tamara Scott and also uh, Ryan's producing Bob Monster at the Cat in the Hat, my guest watching the chat. So if you've got something to say to us, feel free to jump on that chat. Uh, uh, Maddie's here. Well, thanks, Maddie, for being here. We always love to be here. And we're talking about civil discord and how do we as Christians deal with this, this, this incredible fight that we seem to be in. And it, Tamara, is it, is it just me or is it, is it heated up? Is it worse oh, than it ever has? It's definitely ratcheted up. Um, when I was a kid, I don't remember seeing Republican Democrat. I don't remember that big battle. Everybody voted but you didn't know really how everyone was going to vote and it wasn't this partisan issue that that it's become today everything you did was not a political statement mm -hmm. you could you could just go for a cup of coffee without having to find out what that um organ that commercial that industry whether they those cups were recycled whether they gave back to the rainforest mm -hmm. you know everything we do today has been made a political statement by who the squeaky wheel? Is that all it is? The squeaky wheel gets the oil? I think, again, it comes back to allowing our kids, even 80% of Christian kids, in the public schools. Government schools. And they've heard, they've heard year after year this indoctrination. And, we're, you know, we're putting our homes up second mortgages to send kids to college, and it's continued there. And at K through college, they hear capitalism's bad, 
um, you know, the Constitution's outdated, uh, the white man's greedy. How can you possibly then come back and rebut some of those things when that's all they've heard and mom and dad sent them there, so they assume you agree? All right, we're going we're gonna to play a video, and I think this is going to translate okay on the radio. Um, leave my mic open, Ryan. So if there's visual things that I don't think are translating on the air, I'll tell you what it is. At some point, it's a singer, and the singer's name is Mac Lamore, and this is called Same Love. Check. And, it, and it may be offensive. If they can see the video, it may be offensive to some people on the same. The visual six. might mm-hmm. be. What's yeah. it about? It starts out with a young man being born questioning who he is. And again, I don't think most third graders question who they are unless they've heard it somewhere. Right. And then through his life, will he marries his partner. And and the reason I brought it to your attention was that this was shown at a college, what we used to think was a Christian college. And these students are thinking this is a wonderful message. They, they're buying the lie mm. that if you speak in love, you've got the truth. Mm. Or if you have a nice fluffy message like this with great music, that you, that's. I'll, do you want me to read what this one college student said about it? Yeah. During, yeah. during the song, almost every person at the concert had their hands up, their eyes closed. It reminded me of church. The whole crowd spoke every word with Macklemore. We were thirsty for those words. We want to hear about equality and love in a gentle way. We're sick of harsh words on both sides. Say what you want about my generation, but we can feel, smell fake. From a mile away. This rapper from Seattle had brought us truth in the song form. We all knew it. I live in such a conservative bubble that I couldn't believe the crowd's positive, thankful reaction. So is this video uh, in favor of being gay? Yes. And so then there's this Christian student saying that's truth. But see, what does the Bible tell us? It tells us that Satan comes disguised as an angel of light. Yeah. And here, because that side is seen more loving, they... Sometimes what is what is truthful, what is best, is harsh and biting. When your child strikes out in the street, you grab them quickly and you yell, right. harsh and biting. Right. You're physical because there's imminent danger. Yeah. And so sometimes because we've been put in that position as a Christian, and now with everything coming at us, because we've been negligent for so long, Bob asked the question, when if, or one of you asked the question, when have Christians not been persecuted? I would say in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, we really weren't persecuted here in America. But it was because we were doing nothing. We were sitting back idly while prayer was taken out of the school. Mm-hmm. We weren't. We were being negligent while our kids were being taught rot. Right. That was my point. So if you're not being per- if you so if you're doing some if you are active or people are active, you'll you'll get some sort of you'll get some sort of persecu- I don't know if persecution. It's all on different levels, isn't it? I mean, nobody's being imprisoned here, but people lose jobs here. People lose. You, you lose all. You can lose all sorts of things here because of you. Yeah. Maybe not in an open, not openly, but, but favor, public favor. Sure. All right. Let's uh, let's start the video and leave my mic on, Ryan, so I can verbalize what's going on. And at some point, I may tell you to shut it off. And again, this is Mac Lamore, and it's called Same Love, and it is an example of how our kids are being brainwashed, how they're truly, truly being brainwashed. Here's the organ music, and yet most churches have dumped the organ because they think the kids won't think that's cool. What's he start with? Yeah. And the picture we're looking at is a woman uh, in labor and being taken care of by nurses, and it looks uh, it looks pretty 60s, 70s. Husband and wife. And now she's holding the new it's a boy, and she's happy, and the daddy's happy, and they're kissing the little boy. See, first they pull your emotions. Yeah. They, yeah. They, they bring you into the story. Yeah, with babies. Of course they do. Now he's growing up. He's riding bicycles, playing out in the forest, walking down a creek. When I was in the See third the boy grade, scout outfit? I thought that I was gay because I could draw. My uncle was, and I kept my room straight. I told my mom, tears rushing down my face. She's like, Ben, you've loved girls since before pre-K. Tripping. 
Yeah, I guess she had a point, didn't she? Bunch of stereotypes all in my head. I remember doing the math, like, yeah, I'm good at Little League. A preconceived idea of what it all meant. But those that like the same sex have the characteristics. The right wing conservatives think it's a decision. And you can be cured with some treatment and religion. Man made rewiring of a predisposition, playing God. Oh nah, here we go. America the brave still fears what we don't know. And God loves all his children. It's somehow forgotten, but we paraphrase a book written 3,500 years ago. I don't know. And I can't change. Even if I tried. Even if I wanted to. And I can't change. He's now arguing with his mother. Even if I tried. I would think and uh this is a popular song on uh it's, radio they all sung along with it and the young lady in her letter makes the point that we've all grown up watching saturday night live right. we read tina, tina fey and again this is the neglect of us as parents this is why we find ourselves where we are we've let the captives have our children all right or the captors have our children this was the frankie i told you about okay so uh let's try to be as nice as we can to him Frankie, are you there? I'm here, guys. Good afternoon. <laughs> have you seen that video before? Yeah, I was actually supposed to have lunch with Mac May in New York this week. And why didn't you? I couldn't make it. I had to stay here because the wife is gone for two weeks, and I'm home with the kids all by myself. So poor oh, that's me. that's right. That's right. Yes. Poor you. Poor you. <laughs> all right. So um, you're a big proponent. Um, what, what, what's the name of your organization that you started or you're a part of? I'm part of a group called Life After Hate. Which Life after budget. hate. Yes. And what do you consider to be hate? Hate is when you judge somebody uh, maliciously uh, due to their differences of you, I guess, would be the easiest way and the way to quit, get quicker to, uh, I guess, your argument. All right. So if I, uh, if I say to my 14-year-old grandson, uh, you got to quit playing those video games, buddy. You're lazy, and you got to get off your butt and get out and do some work. And he looks at me and says, that's just hate speech, Grandpa. Would you agree? That's a ridiculous argument, so I'm not going to. That's a ridiculous argument, Mac. So you don't <laughs> that agree? Doesn't work. It doesn't work. That's, that, how, that's not hate speech, no. Okay, so if I say to someone who chooses to be a homosexual, and wants to change my laws in this country, which we've had for hundreds and hundreds of years, that uh, marriage is between a man and a woman, that he doesn't have any right to change his laws just because of his personal feelings. Is that hate speech? Well, Mac, if you're saying, again, because I know your whole panel in there is going to think that being gay is a choice. It is a choice. Fight, no, it's not. Well, we, have no, medic we have no medical proof that it's genetic. Is there medical genetics when, look, I told you my story before. I told you this before. I grew up in a tough little neighborhood where there was three boys in our neighborhood who were tormented their whole lives. And I can tell you they're still to this day. They're now, thank God, friends of mine who were kids that were tormented, who did not wish to be gay, who were gay from the day they came out of the womb. And those were tortured young men almost their whole life in our okay, neighborhood. Well, and but I Frankie, know, no, I can no, line no, up no, three no. people, it, too, it, that'll tell you they see? were you born and they had gay feelings and they broke away from that. So we can both bring no. in, I know somebody nope. who. Nope. No, it doesn't matter. I know the truth. And it's from white okay, experience that those yours. men, yeah. that those men were born that way. And it's not a choice. They were, they were born, born sinners. Right. Oh, okay. Right. They were oh. born sinners. No, I think they were born the human being they were supposed to be. Do, well, you, do you not believe in sin? I mean, what, what in your fact that, you know, is murder sin? It's, it's a crime. And, you know, it's, it's like, do I believe that homosexuality is a sin? I don't. No, I'm just asking if you even believed in the concept of sin, because some people don't. So I was just trying to figure out well, where no, you come no, from. I mean, I believe that we have choices that are wrong and right. I mean, and I think, but to hold someone as a sinner uh, from the day they're born, I don't believe that. No, I don't believe that. Well, the Bible tells all. us that we we have a sinful nature from day one. 
We're born with sinful hearts. Okay. But Frankie doesn't believe in the Bible. That's that's why Jesus died for us on the cross. He doesn't believe in Jesus. No, I believe in Jesus. Thank you. Okay. Don't, well, if don't you don't judge me, Mac. Let's let's get to the, the reason why you asked me to call in, and from when I went back and listened, is that you are saying because every day, and, and this is why I keep writing on your Facebook wall. You're talking about it again. You will post five. You will wake up in the morning. You've posted at five because I just went back and looked at five ten this morning. You woke up and you posted something against gay people, and it is nonstop all the time. And then you get really derogatory. You get very hurtful. You get very. You say very nasty things. That like what do I use? Be, well, like well, like what do I say that's hateful? Seriously, because I don't use foul language. Deviants. They don't. They're sexual deviants, and that they have. And how can they? How can we get them back to being a God-centered life? What's but know that's what's not hateful. Okay, Mac. You're saying you you know better because you're going to be closer to God. Hey, you don't know what's going on in their life, and you don't know a personal relationship. This is what we always get back to, you Christian, you Christian, your style, that it's a personal relationship. Let that person have their personal relationship. You don't know what's going on. He might be coming to God every morning and repenting. You don't know, but you have to sit there and keep slamming them, calling them sexual deviants. I mean, it's the language that you use. That's the hate speech. It's, Mac, I know that you are not for gay marriage. I know so many good Christian conservatives that are against gay marriage, and they brought it up as it comes in conversation, but they don't throw it in everyone's face and make it their martyrism that you do. That's the problem. Well, and did, it's nonstop. Did, did Jason nonstop. Collins get thrown in my face this week? Jason, no, he didn't. No, you make it in your. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's go back to your Tebow comment. All right, we've we've got to we got to take a break. Uh, We're on a hard break. uh, Hold on, uh, we'll come back. Start right there. (laughs) Get some oxygen. In the middle of it, we've also got another call holding. We'll continue this conversation. Civil discord. How do we do a better job of being Christians? But see how they dismiss. You can't. You can't. You don't have the right to say that. Right. I don't have the truth. They have the truth. And what's their truth based on? We'll talk about it next live on The View from a Pew. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Friday. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at KittiesUSA.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. The only way we come to know the saviorship of Jesus Christ is by bowing and acknowledging that he is Lord and King over all the earth. Jesus Christ died on a cross, paid the penalty for our sin, and by repenting of our sin and accepting him by faith, what he did for us, we are forgiven. 
Salvation is not a combination of faith and works. Salvation is by faith alone in God. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. in the pew not pulpit come on now let's reason together the phone lines are open so call 855-244-0077 now here's j michael mccoy all right we're back on a uh, friday afternoon fridays are more fun with maddie smith in the house on the view from a pew bob monserrat the cat in the hat watching your chat ryan producing and my special guest tamara scott on the phone little frankie and i'll just let you two just pick up where you were okay hey frankie are you there I'm here. All right. I, I was I was saying first though before whatever the power <laughs> before was, we were rudely interrupted with that commercial. Yes. Yes. So the, the whole Tebow thing, Tebow only the 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 far right Christian people who kept posting and Mac posted this picture too by the way of Tebow doing the Tebow, which is what they call it now when he goes down on one knee, and a picture of Muslims praying it, and on the picture of Tebow said, "Well, he's not acceptable. Why is this acceptable?" Which was such crap, a typical, very right wing Christian concern and stuff. And I even wrote that to both was acceptable to me. You somehow have taken that people were against Tebow. Nobody's against Tebow. The only people that are against Tebow or whatever city he goes to because he's a lousy quarterback. <laughs> I, I think the that... point is that people are not against Tebow. You maybe you might have heard one comment. I've heard a hundred comments bad against uh, what you call coming out of the closet. So, I mean, you just make it up in your head to make it look, oh, we're so under persecution. Now see, somebody so could say, Christmas. Frank, somebody could say that you're being awfully judgmental towards us. You don't know me. You don't know what's in my head. And you don't know my history, just as you ask us to be careful about your friend's history. So that's, I think, the point that I'm making is that a lot of what you demand of us, you're not willing to give back. But well, I, I, I know I never said anything about you. I don't know you. you I but you said about, you write Christians. Christians. Only Max posts, which come from a very Christian conservative, ultra right wing Christian conservative post. Those are what I, I, I don't know you, and I, I don't even judge you, and I don't even judge Mac. I love Mac more than he even thinks I love him, and he knows that, actually. I do know that. And now, you do know And that. I appreciate that you can at least talk about it, be on different, differing sides from different point of views, and talk about it. So when you say you believe in God, and you said you believed in Jesus? I do. But do you believe um, that there are a set of rules when God, when the Bible was written, there are a set of rules, there are a set of parameters. And so I feel like I have to fall in line with those parameters. I get the feeling and correct me if I'm wrong. You think you can move those parameters? You know, I just, I, 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 I'm a human person who believes that the Bible was written a long time ago. And there are some things in there that I, you know, what? if you ask me to truly believe in the floods, I don't believe in them. I don't believe there was an ark where we got every. I just don't believe that. But it does not. Have you been to Israel? Away, that does not take away from the fact that I, in the morning, who I pray to and ask for guidance from, that doesn't has no bearing on that whatsoever. It, except for the Bible says who he who he believes in his heart. So it's not just the words. God definitely does not want the words. He's thrilled you're praying, I'm sure, but he doesn't want empty words. He wants the belief in the heart. He wants the faith in the heart. And I don't know if you've been to Israel. I just got back in January. And I can tell you, not only do they not doubt it, they have the artifacts to prove it, whether it's a flood, whether it's, uh, you know, Jesus walking on the face of the earth, Jesus being in the pit. Um, you know, it's easy. Erwin Lutzer says the mind justifies anything the heart wants. And that's the danger for all of us, Christians, non-Christians. I don't care what our view is. We can always bend the rules to fit around our vice. All right, I'm going to add Neil to this conversation because he also uh, just called in. But I don't, I don't think you've... Neil, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, go ahead, Neil. What's your thought? Well, I think the entire issue is maybe right for a compromise, to tell you the truth. And I think that America should legalize gay marriage. But that's not to say that gay people can get married. Make it two separate things all together. You can get married, or you can get gay married. A man and a man, or a woman and a woman can get together and say, we just got gay married. 
make the form that you fill out at the courthouse two completely different colors because they're two completely different things. Well, Neil... Why not? It doesn't violate the sanctity of marriage. Then, because we're not talking about marriage, we're talking about gay marriage. It does, though, Neil, because your child in the classroom already is being talked about parent versus uh, guardian versus parent. And Don Stefanowicz, who wrote the book Out From Under, was raised in a home with a gay dad. And being in Canada, who's a little bit further along the line than we are, said that this is a huge civil rights issue. What you say can be taken before a tribunal. And in her opinion, no one, as far as Christians, had ever been found innocent in front of a tribunal. Your, your rights are incredibly handicapped as a Christian. Shea Feldblum, who is the president's pick for the t- commissioner of the Equal, Opportunity, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, has said when it comes to gay rights and Christianity, she can't think of a time when Christianity would trump gay rights. So already uh, Christians will be put at a minimal. They'll be handicapped. Christians in this country, though, are powerless to prevent gay people from living together for their entire lives, and perhaps powerless to prevent, to prevent them from uh, raising children. Nobody's saying they can't live together. They can all the stuff they want. If two gay people want to say they're married, you know, who cares? All right, Neil, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for listening. Frankie, go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, I mean, why, is it the, again, now you're pushing the Christianity, and, and again, I know a lot of Christians that are, are okay with gay marriage, so it's not all Christians, and Christianity isn't I know Christians war. who are okay with adultery. That doesn't make it right. <laughs> again, see, now it was when you talk like that is where you're, I'm, I'm saying that I don't believe that you can say that these people are sinful, bad people. And that, Mac does that I'm all the time on Facebook. That. Where he compared, yeah, you just did. No. Where you compare this ultimate, they're murder. Like, you, know, you don't say they're homosexual or murder, but they're just like murderers. Well, the That's Bible says sin is sin. You guys do. The Bible says sin is sin. And this isn't my opinion. This is what the Bible's already said. The Ten Commandments talks about adultery. The Ten Commandments talks about murder. That's, it doesn't that's, talk about homosexuality. Adultery would fall in that line, and in several other places oh, in the Old and New you, Testament. Because you de- you define that as actually, I think Jesus even does when he when he when he confirms in in, Ma- in Matthew nineteen when he talks about what marriage is, he says one man and one woman. Yeah, because that's what was okay. That's what was what, Frankie. Because that's, that's what, what society was time. like well, in those again, days. Again, uh, again. Uh, well, because here's what I'm going to. If there were no gay people in the day of Jesus, then apparently people aren't born gay. No. They're There's somehow... No. Di- no, I didn't say that. Okay. I didn't say that at all. I so would, why... Because even why? the rabbis that I talked to, just we had this conversation the other day, he says, how can we be against it when it's always been here? Well, the Bible it's tells always us... always been here. That Jesus... We're not tempted with anything Jesus wasn't tempted with first. So I would say it probably was around, and Jesus wasn't... He was... It was, was around in it was around in Genesis. It was around the whole in, time. in the first it's book. <laughs> it was around yeah. sin. It was has around. always been beings. around. But that because we're human beings and loving emotions for one another, especially two consenting adults, has always been here and it's always going to be here. But it's and been against the law, and you want to change the law, Frankie? Right? You want to? Cha- you're the rebel here. You want to change the law? What law, Mac? What, what law am I trying to change? Uh, well, until, what, seven years ago, marriage was only between a man and a woman. There wasn't a state in the union where two men or two women can get married. And no, they had it, they've had it in Europe. They've had it, I'm, I'm talking about America. Because <laughs> that's all you Christian conservatives talk about is America. That could it's sound the rest of the world. Yeah, that was a little judgmental. The rest of the world that's involved. The rest of the world, guys, there's, we're, it's not just us. It's everybody. You're right. We're on this planet together. We understand that, Frankie. And if you look around the world, all the countries, even America with her issues, People are still flocking to this country because it's the best country on earth. Why? Because we were founded on biblical principles. No. Yeah, we were. No, we weren't. Let's go back over. Let's stop with your lies, the Thomas Jefferson lies. Come on. See, see, that seems harsh and biting to me, Frankie. I don't know, but your name, Colin. Because you just lied. You said we were found. There's so many times where they said this nation is not a Christian nation. We can go pull them all up. And yeah. You remember the Listen, you two can go back and forth Jefferson on this all day long, and no, we no, no, all no, no, know no, no. Frankie's they wrong. Wrote the book, you're the Christian conservative guy, a couple about a year and a half ago, wrote the book. Thomas Jefferson, secretly was a Christian conservative. He had to pull the book because it was known as lies throughout the book. 
Um, right we've got here. Jonathan Wiz Witherspoon. We've got several of our founding fathers quoting. Um, in fact, was it Blackstone that wrote the commentaries on the law? And when Fenny was studying to become an attorney, Fenny read so much scripture in Blackstone's writings that he became an evangelicalist. And he, and he was the one who said, America will be blessed or cursed depending on how Christians take course in politics. All right, we're going to take our last break. We'll come back. Civil discord. Good conversation. Good conversation. Everybody's staying fairly calm. I'm staying out of it, so, you know, everything's okay. Tamara Scott is our guest. We'll be back live on The View from a Pew. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. got questions you've got the answer join the conversation it's your voice we want to hear so call 855-244-0077 now here's j michael mccoy okay we're back 10 before the top tamara scott uh, is our guest today i think frankie uh uh and frankie's on the phone we're talking about civil discord i don't know if you realize this and maybe you'll go back and just listen to the podcast of this but Whatever we say, you say is a lie, and it's not true. Frankie, no. are you there? Okay, so, yeah, I'm here. Because so, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Christianity neither is nor has, or has, sorry, Christianity is neither, or was it part of the common law? In every country, in every age, the priest has been the hostile to the liberty. John, John Adams, the government of the United States, is not and in any sense found it in the Christian religion. You want to keep going? Thomas Paine, James Madison. Hmm. These are people who have stood against this country being considered a Christian nation. What they were standing against quotes. is us being these a theology. Are these, these are their quotes. Yeah. Not they, did not quotes. Want us, they did not want us to be a theocracy. Yeah, that's what they were talking about. That's oh, what this country was founded I on. I got it. So, it wasn't okay. supposed to be a theocracy. But throughout history, and many times in the Old Testament, and if, and if you... I don't know. Do you, I mean, you said you prayed, but I don't want to assume anything. Do you call yourself a Christian? I'm not trying to be ornery. I'm trying to figure out. I don't want to. I don't want to overstep. Do you call yourself a Christian, Frank? I do. Okay. So in the Old Testament, there are example after example where the advisors were the priest. The kings came to the advisors to the priest for before they went to war for consent on a policy. They, they so the law came from the priest. Okay, that's, but that's, okay. So again, now we're going to go back. They're obviously saying, that to me, and any other person, uh, what they're saying. I mean, come on, Thomas Paine, 
All national institutions of church, whether Jewish, Christian, or Turkish, appear no other than human intervention yeah. set up to terrify and enslave. Well, that's getting a little drastic. I don't want to go there. David, but David Barton has Thomas talked Payne. about Thomas Paine and the fact, I mean, you know people who, who one week are solid and five years later you see them and their worldview may have changed. Thomas Paine's worldview changed from what I've been told, from what I've read, and, that, and to the point where the founding fathers asked him not to write some of the things he was writing and at the time he passed, I don't think that he was in good standing with most of the other fan, founding people that we call, consider founding fathers. Uh, I, Sorry, don't, yeah. I don't think this is the real, this isn't the issue ever. No. No, this isn't the issue. The no, founding yeah, fathers as far as Christian. We got, totally got off the issue. Okay, well then, the issue is this then. Frankie, what is unacceptable to you in society? Is, is murder unacceptable? Murder is unacceptable, yes. So okay. then is abortion? Yeah, are you okay with abortion? No, I, you know, Mac, I've talked to you about this before. It's a, That's a, a really tough issue for me. I'm not, you know, it's a tough issue. I, I, I you know, I'm... Well, you're either for babies for being killed or not. See, and then, and see, it's comments like that that make me just... Well, for, Mac, don't, you know, you know, Frankie, Mac, don't be offended. Be a big you. boy. Put on your uh, big boy uh, pants Mac, and I'm don't afraid. be offended. Do you I'm want to kill offended. babies or not? Okay. Listen, here's the, you know... I'm telling you right now what it is, and I think people have said this to you before. I can wake up in the morning and pray and then really plan on having a God day and then have my first hour today, which I get on the Internet and get what I need to get off. And I see your post, and I see other friends of mine that are like-minded like you, and you make me not want to be consider myself a christian i don't think it's, it's not mad. it's not it's not listen guys it's not the person it's those quotes and the time that you are just so self-righteous and so bitter and nasty at another person who doesn't believe what you believe that it makes my skin crawl and it makes me know that we will never be able to have peace with each other because you the stance that you have, see, Mac, like I said, you can come and I have a friendship with you, even when you say, I don't believe in gay marriage. And I said, okay, that's good. Well, see, that's here's fine. my question is why do you look at my posts? Beat the drum and call people names but, and call them sexual deviants. By the way, that's not a name, that's a description of an action. Asshole is a name. Okay, okay sexual deviants is a description of an action. You say they are sexual deviants. Well, you say they are. Okay. That's calling somebody okay, something. Then, Frankie, why don't you block me? No, because I well, love you. Just like I listen to your show. <laughs> I listen to your show on most days because, Max, sometimes you really, especially your recovery stuff, is really good, and you're my friend. It's the Facebook stuff. And then even on the radio, you're a little different. The Facebook, you get brutal, Mac. You make it so people want to fight with each other. And that's why I keep saying you're talking about it again. And there is no civil discord because the way you start the conversation off, Mac, that's and that's not a good Christian. I don't care. It's not. You I'm not a good well, enough Christian. You don't make me think there's Jesus. You well, then you don't know Jesus. Jesus. But you make me think there's a man with an ego who has something. No, to say. You, you 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 don't know Jesus if you don't think he wouldn't stand you up today and you say, "Stop your sinning, sin you no know. more." You don't know Jesus, man. You don't. I'm telling you. I pray and I meditate every day. Every day, and I just ask for him to be a light, to be anything that I could be a helpful human being to anyone in my society. Are you being helpful culture. to me? Uh, yeah, no. absolutely. No. No. Oh, yeah, I am, Mac, and you know that I am. Frank, the Bible warns us several times over to be careful who we're praying to and how we're praying. Um, I think I said earlier about uh, the lips can flatter. I think the scripture says the lips flatter me, but your heart is far from me. Bible talks about obedience over and over, meaning obedience to what the Bible says, not what we want to interpret it to be, not what's con culturally comfortable today, but enough to pick up our cross and carry it for Christ, enough to carry his banner, enough to stand on his word. We don't have the option. I'm not arrogant enough to say I can revise what God wrote. He obviously, even though he's omnipotent, he, he obviously missed this one and didn't didn't think that in 2012 or 2013 we'd be dealing with these issues. I can't do that. Um, okay. it's, it stood the test of time. And who am I to think that all of a sudden in my generation, we, re we reserve the right to revise it? Well, I can pray today and say, please, God, allow me. Please, Lord, allow me to be the sharper tool in your shed today that if you need me for work, 
I'm there and I'm available to bring glory to you. And if I also say, God, please allow me to be a load-bearing wall for you today. And if you please can, keep filling my brick and mortar so that I can help somebody and in the end bring glory to you. And then that's I don't, my I don't personal doubt, relationship. I don't doubt that's your intentions. my personal relationship with God. I don't and doubt no your intentions. Any. But I would ask intentions. you to pray this, that God uh, give you who he is, that, that he help you surrender you, John, I think it's 333 or 330, that he help you surrender yourself, that you can learn more of him, less of Frankie, more of Jesus Christ. More of not ego and Christianity conservatives who are really... Just remember that Jesus I said... Keep, I can keep going with that all day long. Guys. Okay, well, I just want to make something very clear. Jesus said, a man shall not lay with a man and a woman shall not lay with a woman. He said that. So when you tell me what Jesus thinks... You're telling me that what he said, he didn't say, or he I didn't mean it. I never say what Jesus thought, guys. You keep telling me this stuff. I never say. I have no idea. When I get up there, I hope. Well, you I'm just told me I didn't thing. know Jesus. You, Mac, as hurtful as some of them posts are, Mac, that is not by God. Uh, what that I would is- tell you there, like I said earlier, and I love you, Frankie, but put your big boy pants on and stop being offended. Don't be a baby. Oh, I'm offended by those words. Anyway, we're out of time. Tamara, thanks. We'll do it again soon. That flew. Everybody, have a great weekend, and we'll see you Sunday on RestoringHopeLive.com.